and welcome to this Marcus and Mike show, guys, where technical di- where technical difficulties happen often, and uh, I am a habit of creature, and I messed up yesterday. So, it, Marcus, I'd like to personally apologize to you face-to-face here. Uh, okay. Yesterday's show, we recorded it just, just fine. We like I think I thought we had a pretty damn good show, but yeah. uh, I mean, we looked really good on camera, but yeah. the voices were, were just not there. I forgot to yeah. push the voice record button. If you look down here at the bottom right of the screen, you see the bars yeah. bars going. Right. They were going. Okay. Just, it was just, just not recording for whatever reason. But got yeah, that they were, figured they just, out. <laughs> they were just watching our mouths move, huh? Yeah. Uh, I got a lot of comments saying, hey, you guys look great on camera, but uh, right. I, I can't can't hear you. Well, hopefully you can hear us today. I did run a little right. test beforehand, so we should be good to go. So okay. what we covered yesterday – we talked a little bit of Dak Prescott, and now that you've had a day to digest it a little bit more, spew on it a little bit more, get a little bit more emotional, but like like it, like about it. I gotta bring it back up. Dak Prescott turned down the reported thirty million dollars that the Cowboys offered him. Uh, he's asking for forty. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, I I think it's just you know contract gesturing. Um, you know, he turned down 30, he's asking for 40. It's like, you know, if somebody spilled coffee on you, you're going to ask for 30 million and, but you'll settle for two. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, so he's asking for 40. He knows he's not getting 40. So he's hoping that Jerry Jones, they counter offer with 34, 35, somewhere above Carson Wentz's 32 million. I, I almost, I'm almost shocked a little bit at Dak Prescott, um, wanting even turning down $30 million. Uh, To me, that's, that's crazy to me. I actually think that's more of his agent. Um, but I mean, look, the, the agent speaks vicariously through, you know, they, through the, their clients. So um, maybe that's what Dak is telling him to turn it down. And he's saying, or the agent's telling Dak, hey, we need to turn this 30 million down. I wonder what Dak's saying. Like, is Dak going, damn, really? Is that okay? <laughs> right. Because, I mean, here's a guy that's made, and, and we referenced peanuts. Remember, Omari Cooper said Melvin Gordon, one of his friends, he's making peanuts and right, he's making right. like $5.6 million this year. That's not peanuts. But you know what's crazy? Uh, and, and look, 600000 what Dak's been getting the last three years, that's not peanuts either, right? Right. But that is peanuts when you consider NFL, you know, in NFL royalty. That is $600,000 is peanuts. I mean, if you want to go there. I, I find it hard to believe that a guy that's made $600,000, very humble kid, Dak Prescott, and by all means as a good leader, that he would turn down thirty million dollars like I almost find that hard to believe and so but he did and from all the ports and I respect the people that reported it so I'm hoping that Dak changes his stance here a little bit and 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 doesn't even want better than what Carson Wentz the 32 million I'm hoping that you know he can sign for that 30 million dollars a year and I think he'll eventually come to a census where I'm I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and listen Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and their new boy uh well he's not really new but he may be new to the scene of a lot of people Will McClay um um, they're pretty good at what they do. They get the job done. And I have no doubt in my mind that they're not lying, that they have offers out there to Amari Cooper, Dak Prescott, and Ezekiel Elliott, all top five at their position. They're out there. And so far, Amari is probably turning down about 17, 18 million a year. Zeke's probably turning down Le'Veon Bell money, about 13 million per year. And he was the highest uh, uh, paid running back on the market this year. And then Dak's turning down 30 million per year. I, so I I I, um, I find that I find that a little crazy that these players um, and there's a salary cap. It's a hard cap that these yeah. players would turn down that kind of money being paid top five at their position, each one of their positions. It's a little hard for me to believe. Let's just hope they turn it around. Let's hope Jerry Jones um, and his nice southern charm brings him in and says, "Hey, fellas, this is this is the deal. Um, you want to win? Do you want to win, or do you always want to go get paid?" Right. So. Uh, you know, it's it's a little crazy to me. I hopefully they'll all three of them be signed by week one, and you know, let's hope for the best. Yeah, you are a hundred percent right uh, on the Dak Prescott situation. Turning down thirty million dollars is crazy to me. It's it's yeah. hard to wrap my head around, uh, especially from from a from from a guy that's only making two two million dollars this season. Sure. Like you, just like just just like you said. Um, yeah. So let me let me just ask you this 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 question are you saying that the media is kind of putting out fake news or do you just don't believe like 
like when you say liking like when you see it you're like i don't believe yeah. that that like that's happening like well i i know i believe that he may have turned out his agent may have turned down 30 million i just find that hard to believe that dak said hey turn that 30 million down like I want to hear it out of Doc's mouth. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So you're saying the agents kind of leading the train on this, trying to get yeah. a, li- a trying to get a little bit more money, uh, which which I think every good negotiation goes back and forth, a uh, goes back and forth a tad bit, that tad bit here. So like right. when like I'm offering you a job, hey, I'm going to pay you sixty thousand dollars a year. You like right. you kind of step back and you mean I mean like you can like. Inside, you're like, oh yeah, sixty thousand is fifteen thousand more dollars than I'm making here. Yeah, 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 gotta. But you have to play, play it calm, and you're like, well, what about sixty five? Just to see if you can push the push the envelope a little bit. Right. Uh, that could possibly be what he's trying to do. You know, saying yeah, I I would like forty. Let's settle at thirty five, right. just like what you said on yesterday. But right. but at the but at but at the same time. Hopefully the Cowboys play hardball and say, no, we're going to offer you 30. We're going to give you yes. 30. If you don't like it, go to Miami. Yes. I, I'm, I'm full in agreement with you. Listen, I normally, I, I normally uh, uh, side with the players when it comes to the NFL, Michael, like, because their job is a beast, man. They could die any play. Like, yeah. I, and, and the baseball players are making a, an obscene amount of money. Mm-hmm. NBA players are making an obscene amount of money. Um, so I normally side with NFL players, really, go get your money. But Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and Will McClay are being very fair here. Yes. I mean, so let, let's not get crazy like they don't want to sign them. Listen, if there wasn't a cap and the Dallas Cowboys became the Yankees, Jerry Jones would say, here, Dak, here's $200 million. Amari, here's 150 Zeke, here's 100 Have fun. Let's have fun and go win the Super Bowl, boys. But he can't do that. They have You're a cap. Right. Jerry Jones would be would, – be George Steinbrenner of the of the he would say let's go get him you know yeah. probably you know what I'll be honest with you if, if if the Cowboys have Jerry Jones has so much money Dak probably wouldn't be the quarterback he'd be paying like Tom Brady you know 80 <laughs> right. million a year yeah yeah <laughs> right. he'd take him away from yeah he'd be paying like Drew Brees 80 million a year to win a Super Bowl so yeah so um listen Jerry loves his players man he's very I if they're I, I know for a fact they're offering them there's contracts in place for Amari Cooper to be like the fourth or fifth highest paid wide receiver, for Zeke to be the second highest paid running back, and for Dak to be like the fifth highest paid quarterback. And neither one, any one of them three, um, may not even be the best at their position. Like I, Zeke's the closest, but man, Saquon Barkley's right there, you know, but Saquon will come up in a couple of years. But um, come on, Amari, come on, come on, Dak, let's wake up here, you know, let, let's, you know, it, it, it's hard to believe they're turning down this money. Yeah, and and uh, we we touched on this several times here. You cannot pay a player twenty yeah. percent of the cap and expect to win. It's just not going to happen. So everything that the Cowboys are doing is definitely in the wheelhouse of keeping the team together and to win multiple championships over this next right. five or five or six year span. I know you do not like the five five year plan, but no, over, but over the next five. Five six years, the Cowboys are built to win no. right now. So. No, no, that, that that yeah, no, no. I don't like just saying it like, oh, okay, we can wait five years. Yeah. There's a five or six year window where we can win, mm-hmm. you know, two out of three or three. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I, I get when you when you put it in context like that. I get it. But let me say this: Jason Witten don't want to hear about no five year plan. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, this we, is this is we, the last year more than more than. Yeah, we life, don't have time for that. We need yeah. we need Witten to hold up a trophy. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of holding up trophies. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts seem to possibly be not doing it again here. Andrew Lux reported calf injury has now become an ankle injury. This is starting to look more and more like the KD situation yes. from the NBA Finals over and yeah. over and over again. Uh, they said he's not going to play any preseason games. He's taken three practices, or he's he's practiced three three times since since right. April, I believe it was. What are your thoughts on this ankle injury? It's a little scary. If you're a Colts fan, I got you. Got to be a little worried about this one, um, because people, you know, put out you know misinformation out there. Oh, it's just this, it's just that, and you know, um, listen, I, I I don't wish injury on any player, but I don't mind when other co- opposing quarterbacks go down. I lose no sleep over it whatsoever. Deshaun Watson went down, you know, so what, you know. Um, so if if he has a problem, injury problem, you know, so be it. But 
Um, they better listen. You better err on the side of caution. You better not bring him back. Then it's okay to miss, you know, to to, to uh, miss a couple of weeks here. Um, we even regular season. You better not. You better learn from that Kevin Durant thing, and you better not bring Andrew Luck back unless he's 100% healthy. And if that means you got to play the first four weeks without him and go with Jacoby Brissett, you do that. So you really got to err on the side. You can't. You can't give us any. Oh, he's good. You hear a couple of days ago, oh, Andrew Luck's going to miss three practices. Oh, really? And now we hear he's missing all preseason, and now we hear it's into the games and into the regular season. So, listen, you better uh, – uh, yeah, you really better err on the side of caution here with Andrew Luck. And if, and if he has to miss four weeks or whatever, so be it. You need Andrew Luck for your long term. You don't – you know, get a wild card ain't that bad. You can get in the tournament. Right. Bill Parcells like to say, hey, you beat Houston – um, and Houston won the division last year, so even that, you know, you got in. The, all you need to do is get in the wild card. So yeah. they better err on the side of caution here of Andrew Luck. Like I said about. yesterday, do not let any team slide into the AFC playoffs because they're going to make a make yeah. a make a run here. But I was listening to a press conference yesterday. Since, since I'm in the Indiana area, we we get a lot of Colts pre- like news coverage and that kind of thing. The owner. It said, hey, we're going to be very transparent on this. We're going to give you all the information that that we know, just so you leave Andrew Andrew alone on the sit on the sit- situation and stop asking him about right. the injury. But here is here is where the where the issue really starts to arise here. So mm-hmm. back in late June, I believe it was June 23rd and 24th, the Colts practiced back to back days. Andrew Luck was at both of those both of those practices on the 25th they had a day off and then the next day andrew luck hasn't practiced since so uh those 23rd so that june 23rd and 24th time frame he looked really really good when he was out on the field but he hasn't been on the been been on the field since so that raises huge red flags for me when you have a off day and then you're not out on the field the very next day after a off day something tells us it's something more than than just a calf strain or right. an ankle sprain. What is really the issue? If the owner is going to be fully transparent, sh- tell us exactly what is going on. Don't just say, "Oh, uh, Andrew referred to the lower leg as an ankle." Or, no, don't tell me none of that. What right. is, is the is the Achilles tore? Is the Achilles partly tore? It's just waiting to ha- like like happen. Let us right. know. L- l- let us know that because after the whole Kevin Durant thing, we all are, are very aware of. The calf and right. the uh, the the Achilles all are one on one. So right. just be transparent, like about the whole situation. And that's all we had to say about that. Yeah, no, and then he's lucky he's playing behind maybe the first or second best offensive lineman in football because yeah. he's going to need that this year. Because if his if if his if his calf's ready to go or Achilles is ready to go, mm-hmm. um, you know you don't want that guy running for his life. So you know, Quentin Nelson and Kastan, Quentin Nelson might be the him and Zach Martin are the two best guards in football. Right. They're Molly. Right. It, and it's no coincidence they came out of Notre Dame. Uh, Zach Martin, <laughs> uh, 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 Quinn Nelson followed Zach Martin, and they're both Maulers. Right. They're both. I could literally say right now Zach Martin's on his way to the Hall of Fame in his fifth year, and that's crazy to say. And Quinn Nelson is pretty damn good. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, err on the side of caution with Andrew Luck, and um, do not bring him back if, if, until he's 100% healthy. And so we'll, we'll see what happens. But this is an interesting situation because Andrew Luck has said he doesn't he'll hurt the team if he plays at 70 percent or whatever he, he needs. Yeah, he yeah. needs to be at 100 percent. So we'll we'll see where this goes. It's it's really interesting. And and he has shown how valuable he is to that team because that year that oh. he sat out, the Colts were horrible. And then last yeah. year they were pretty darn good. What were they 10 and six or yeah. whatever it yeah. was? But yes, but my dad sent me a text early this morning cuz like I told him that we're going to talk about Andrew Luck and he is an Andrew Luck hater. He he hates right. Andrew Luck 100%, really? 100%. But he's like Andrew Luck is a Derrick Rose of the NFL. Oh, All, shit, always yeah. could have could could have would have should have. So right. but let's let's go let's go ahead and stick in that division and today we're going to break down the Houston Texans okay. season, season ticket holder here. Uh so so guys just to uh Backtrack a little bit on yesterday's show. Marcus had Oakland going what six and ten. I had them going nine and seven in that division. Yeah. Uh, so just to for people that didn't hear us, obviously, uh, we're just 
let, letting you guys know what we picked here. But okay. let's go ahead and jump into Houston. Right off the bat here, they are on the road on that Monday night, night game. Take on the New Orleans Saints. Who do you got? Uh, let's see. I, I got the Saints winning week one. March. Yeah, yeah, I got the Saints winning week one. Um, it's it's a mo- mo- Monday night football. Um, it's a big deal. It, it, you know, I think the Raiders and Broncos are playing Monday night too. This the night cap. Yep. But yeah, Houston's running into a bus saw here, and I, I expect Drew Brees and them to win. I got I got them winning week one. Yeah, Monday night at the Superdome. It's kind of a no win situation there, unless you're the Dallas Cowboys and can walk in there and just destroy them. But Week one, I don't see Houston doing a whole lot there, so I have a, a Saints winning yeah. that game as well. Week week two, they're at they're at home, uh, take on the on the Jag, Jacksonville Jaguars. They'll bounce back and they'll beat Jacksonville here. Um, I got Houston. I did it last night. I got Houston starting off a little shaky here in the first six weeks, but they'll bounce back right here and beat Jacksonville week two, their home opener. Yeah, I had the game. I will be at. A, a very, it should be a very good game to watch. Like <laughs> I'm curious of how Nick Foles will. Uh, kind of yeah. grow this season uh we said earlier about a month ago that he is great in a philadelphia eagles uniform but everywhere else right. he is a subpar quarter, and they quarter got, quarterback and they got nick Foles starting off with um was it is it at it, oh sh- oh uh, congratulations they got they got nick Foles starting out, out against kansas city then houston yep good look oh, and two there. <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> so i i I do have Houston winning that game as well. Uh, we've already broke down the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, you had them losing yes. to the Chargers. I have them beating the char- Chargers, uh, yes. giving us a week four matchup, take on the Carolina Panthers. Um, that's at – yeah, it's at home. I got them – I got them losing the Chargers. They'll bounce back and beat Carolina. They'll be 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, I had them beating Carolina as well. Watching Cam Newton throw in preseason, it, it hurts me just to watch that. So I don't think Carolina is like I think I had them going like nine and seven. I think it is, but I don't. I, I that's going to be a big asterisk by that now. Uh, but yeah. Well, they're I, they're saying Cam's getting better than last year because last year. But hey, we'll see. He still has never been that accurate. Right. So he's a career fifty nine percent completion percentage person, which is amazing in today's NFL. Yeah, it's just it's 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 kind of sad actually. It's sad, yeah. Uh, so week five, you had them beating Atlanta. I had them beating yes. Atlanta as well. Week six, we had them both losing to Kansas City, right. giving us a week seven matchup at Indianapolis, take, taking on the Colts. I have them losing, so that I have got them after the first seven weeks, three and four, and that's my team. And I think they're going to be in the AFC Championship game, but they're three and four after seven weeks. Yeah, I had them losing to the Colts as Colts as well. Uh, I've been to the Lucas Oil State Stadium, and it is not loud. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just a real annoying, echoey. It just, it, but just, it just teams just don't play well there. Uh, so I have the Colts winning that game as well. Uh, going on to the next week, back at home, taking on Oakland. They'll get back on track. They'll get it. They'll be 500 um, after they beat the Raiders. They'll be four and four. Yeah, uh, I have them beating Oakland as well. We we broke this down uh, yesterday, actually, uh, with the whole turmoil thing that's happening in 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 Oakland. I think yeah. they are just a disaster waiting to happen. Um, yeah. Then we have uh, the next week uh, at Jacksonville Jag- Jaguars. Or wait, oh yeah, yeah. Or, no, it's at it's a home game, right? That says at Jacksonville. Okay. They, they have to play oh, home you know what it is? I'm sorry. This is that London thing, eight thirty oh. in the morning game. Oh, okay. So it's kind of freaking me out. I'm looking out on schedule because I don't see. Uh, I'll take the Texans at this one. They'll beat them in London, just like they beat them week two. Yeah, I have the uh, uh, Houston winning this game as well. I did not realize this was the London game. Yeah. That's even more of a Houston win then. Uh, yeah, no, but it's one of those man. This game will be done by noon. Yeah, which is nice to watch, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's football all day. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> weird for me because I gotta wake up early now. God, on right. that day. Yeah. <laughs> so then the uh, what's that? Week ten is is a bye week. Week eleven, they're traveling to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. This is their last loss of the season, baby. They'll they're gonna lose to Baltimore. I had them losing to Baltimore as well. Um, I just I I don't know just something playing at the Baltimore it's just it's just tough on teams. Uh, right. Next week they're at home taking on the Colts. Uh, they're they'll win this one. They'll they'll beat the Colts. Yeah, I have them beating the Colts as well. I kind of have them going on a on a late game or a late season yeah. tear tear here as well. 
yeah. to re- to really push for that division title. We 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 have both already have them beating the Patriots, both have them beating the Broncos as well. Give us a Week 15 matchup at Tennessee Titans. Yeah, no, I think they'll beat Tennessee. In the in the NFL, did this weird weird thing. There's a quirk in the schedule. Crap. They're, they played Tennessee two out of the last three weeks, so it's kind of weird. I, I I think Tennessee might be fighting for a wild card, but I think if the Texans go in and beat them, um, and it's Week 15 actually. Um, if they beat them on December 15th and Week 15, they'll knock Tennessee out of the playoffs, and Tennessee won't have a chance at the wild card. So I have the Texans beating. Tennessee at Tennessee. Yeah, I'm. I hate when the NFL does this, where they schedule yeah. back-to-back games just like like just like this. I, I I think it's it's it is horrible on the teams. It's horrible on the fans. But I actually have Tennessee beating Houston at Tennessee. Um, okay. Usually this time of year, Marcus Mariota gets hurt. The Titans right. fall 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 way way off. But they have Ryan Tannehill this yeah. this like this year as a suitable right. backup. So and then what, what's what, what, what's dumb, Michael, about the schedule, and you and I both hate it, is they play Tennessee two out of the last three weeks, right? Yeah. What if what if Tennessee made the wild card and Houston, and then they had to play the following week? So that, they would play right. them three times in four weeks. That would be horrible. That's asinine. That would be horrible for Titans and uh, uh, Houston fans for sure. And that's horrible for the NFL too. Yeah. Really. yeah. So week sixteen, you had them beating Tampa Bay. Actually, yes. had them losing to Tampa Bay, kind of stumbling uh, toward okay. the end. And here, giving us the Week 17 matchup versus the Titans at home. I think this is the one where if they beat Tennessee, they go 11-5 and five and win the division. And then it, I think the Colts, on the other hand, have to win their final game and go 10-6 and six and then hope that Houston loses. You know, it's going to be one of those final day game scenarios. And if Houston loses to Tennessee, then the Colts win the division. So Tennessee beats, uh, excuse me, Houston beats Tennessee. They go 11 and five. They win the division. Yeah, I have them beating the Tennessee the last week of the year, going 10 and six for okay. for for like me. Uh, this week 17 is a must win to really catapult them into the division championship again. So right. circle that week 17 matchup as a, a must win. The week 15 as well as a must win as right. well uh, to really catapult them into the division championship. Uh, I think they win. I think they do win the division this this year. Yeah. Oh, you said Houston's going to win the division this year, ten and six. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, I I have them winning at eleven and five. Ten and six is a little dicey because you know the Colts are going to. You know, it depends on this Andrew Luck situation. What we talked about. Um. It, it, you know, Andrew Luck could they, they could make a late playoff surge and if they if they could if they could get to ten and six as well as the. As well as the Texans, and it's tie-breaking scenarios mm-hmm. come into play, and then who beat who head-to-head. Now, if, if one of the teams beat the other team twice, then that's the first head-to-head they look at. Right. Then after that, it's common opponents. So, yeah, I will. I'll be interesting to know where you have Tennessee finishing. I mean, excuse me, Indianapolis finishing. You know, to see are they going to go nine and seven? Are they going to tie Houston at ten and six? So we'll we'll see what will we do when we do the uh, the Colts schedule later on. Well, we'll definitely find out because we're going to break down the Colts tomorrow, guys. Okay. So join us tomorrow as we break down the Indianapolis Colts staying in the AFC South. Uh, see where Marcus has the Colts. Well, are they going to win that division or come in second place again and, and, right. and like and like a wild card? Before we head out, Marcus, anything that you need to cover? No, I'm I'm, I'm pretty good. Um, just uh, man, just uh, just sitting here, like you said, living a dream. Man, I, I I got I got I got maintenance. If you if you don't notice, I'm little, I got my brother here, some of my family's here. I got maintenance here. You know, it's like, you know, that's why I turn this. If you see me turn this way, I turn that way. I'm not just doing that because I want to work out a little bit. It's like <laughs> I got stuff going on all around me. So working those yeah, abs, I mean, working those abs. Yeah, yeah no, um, but yeah, we, we we do the the cult schedule next week and then come full circle on this. If Andrew Luck was is to miss the first month or something, they're confident in Jacoby Brissett. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, but they're not confident. He's a good backup. He's like Colt McCoy. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the Redskins are confident in Colt McCoy going two and two and holding the the, the fort down like for RG three. You know, like back in you know what I mean. Like he's the the the, the Saints are confident in Teddy Bridgewater to hold the fort down. The the Tennessee is confident in Ryan Tannehill to hold the fort down. They're confident in Jacoby Brissett to hold the four down. But if he doesn't hold the four down and they happen to go one and three out the gate again, it's going to be very difficult. That's why it's hard to pick these games. If I knew Andrew Luck was going to be completely healthy, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I might pick these games knowing he might miss that first month because they, they, they would be very silly. They would behoove themselves to put him out there 
knowing he could get an Achilles tear right. or a calf tear. See, a calf tear is not as bad as Achilles, but it's no joke. If you get that, you know, grade grade three strain or whatever like that, you could be gone a couple of months on a calf tear. Right. So then your season is messed up. You're, you know, you have Jacoby Brissett as your starting quarterback, really. And so you have, you have a shot at the division because it's the NFL, but you really have no shot when you're going up against Deshaun Watson and, you know, the defense of Jacksonville and, you know, yeah. and Tennessee's always going to – Tennessee's one of those damn teams. They're like Iowa, you know, like – They're always there. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, in other words, you can beat Iowa, but if you go in there going, eh, we're just going into Ames, no big <laughs> deal, you get your heads handed to you. Yeah, you have to beat them. So – Yeah, so we'll definitely go – Yeah, we'll definitely go more in depth on the Colts tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to try to round up some more Andrew Luck news to see if they've released yeah. anything else. Just to uh, further, you know, kind of pick our picks all like a, like a, a little bit here. But guys, thanks right. for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we are less than a month away from NFL c- c- season. How about like tw- it's like twenty six days? Yep. Get excited. Get excited, man. <laughs> dude. That every Sunday is awesome, man. Just put on that red zone, man. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, I barely get up and go to the bathroom. Like I have to have stuff handed to me. It's on, <laughs> dude. Like, it's that Sunday. That that Sunday. The, you watch football till your eyes bleed. Yep. It's a yeah, beautiful like I'm, thing. I'm, it's a beautiful thing. And then I'm watching the highlights. I'm going like this, like keeping my eyes focused because I'm sleepy. Like I've got, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> man, for that four months, I'm in lockdown mode, baby. Like, yep. it's, yeah. All right, man. Well, join us tomorrow, guys. Same time, same place. Uh, break down Indianapolis Colts. Have a good day. <laughs>